today I am joined by James Raffield, the Director of Competitive Intelligence at Druva. And fun fact, son of a fisherman. We were actually offline, we were just doing a little deep dive into our family heritage. James, it's so exciting to have you join us. I've heard so much from to be here. all corners of Clue about James and the Druva team, and to have you on the podcast is an honor. Love it. Yeah, you know, I'm a big uh, big Clue fan and advocate, so happy to be here with you. I'm a little starstruck being with Adam, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll make our way through. That's a lot. I didn't pay him to say that, I swear. Yeah, yeah. Um, today, we are continuing on uh, a little series we're working on where we're talking to some of the experts in our customer base that are building the best Intel Digest or competitive Intel newsletters for their entire organization. Related to that, two listeners, if you're watching on YouTube, listening to the podcast, uh, we actually just built a resource as well, tapping on some of the experts like James and others, and all the best practices you need to build a winning competitive Intel newsletter. So you can check out that resource in the show notes, links, all of the above. Go check it out. It's it's an awesome piece of content. James, we always like to hit first three tactical pieces of advice. And since we're talking all things Intel Digest, what are three things the audience should be thinking about when building their Intel Digest? Um, the way I think about it is continue the saga. I'm telling a story um, that's moving out in the future. So I want to relate it to where we were yesterday, the progress we've made and we're moving forward. So I'm going to continue the saga, keep it moving forward. I'm going to use that saga to first engage. And I'm in that newsletter, I'm going to inspire. Those are the, the top three pieces that I use always. So, okay, you got, this seems like storytelling then. Continue the saga. Storytelling elements. How, how does that look within, um, in the Druva newsletter today? Like how, how are you telling a story? How are you keeping the story on, on track that everyone's following along? So I have um, usually six competitors that I track very closely. So I've created this storyline with six, um, each of those um, six competitors, who they are. I've given them an identity and given my sales reps a way to think about who that company is. If they have a particular expertise in technology, then I label them and I put them in that. And then we start to track that competitor saga through that. If I have one competitor in particular that's um, known and were founded by protecting virtualized workloads. So I named that the virtualization company. So I create these sagas or stories about the vir virtualization company where they came from moving forward, and I try to bring them to today. That way my sales reps can engage with that competitor and we can start to track them as they move forward and the stories that I'm telling about their progress. So what I wanna do early is set the narrative so that we can um, understand what the narrative is so I can train um, the A's and the SEs and the executives and the directors to be part of that narrative and not just watching it from the outside. So I'm using that narrative to get them engaged with the story. What I find is when I do that, um, they come back with more intel. They understand that that's part mm. of the compete culture. And when we talk to each other about those competitors, we are telling the story. That, that story helps me go in, into things like enablement and engagement with those field leaders. Um, so I use that component to, to broaden um, the focus across the story that I'm telling about a very specific competitor, the, um, mm. the security competitor, the virtualization competitor, et cetera. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is make the field part of that storyline. That continue the saga is when you came to, to Druva, you may not have had a clear understanding of the market. You may not have a clear understanding of a particular piece of technology, but by under, helping you understand your competitors, you start to see where we fit in that market. And that gives you some context to start, context to start understanding products and services that we take to the market and how they make an impact. Would you say that the, the digest you're building is sort of the primary vehicle for telling the story and for grounding the entire organization in sort of where Druva fits in the landscape? Or are there other pieces as well? Like how does it fit in with this kind of culture of compete that you mentioned? So um, when I got to Druva, there were not a lot of collection sources, right? We had some battle cards that were out there that you could go click on Seismic, find your battle cards spread across the space. Um, and what was missing was that com that compete culture component, having everybody engaged and understanding this is not just about uh, somebody being hired now to feed you with um, information about all of our competitors, 
um, but for us to be put in a place where we have a clear understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and where competitive Intel fits into that. You know, the, the mission is um, continued growth for our organization, um, reduce churn, um, increase visibility across the marketplace, and raise awareness about um, what data protection inside the SaaS market does. So when I think about that as the umbrella to all the messaging um, that I put out, I'm using this newsletter that I typically send out on Fridays so that my E's and SE's have the weekend to consume that. Um, there's a call to action about what we're going to talk about Monday. This is what we'll be waiting for you Monday when you come back in the office. So that Monday is that call to action on where you heard, you saw what we um, put in the newsletter to inform you, right? We gave you progress. Uh, the saga that we're moving forward, we're always tracking um, how we might have taken market share, how we took an account um, from a competitor, et cetera. So I'm, I'm using those things to inspire and engage the SEs. And then as we move forward, that call to action when they land on Monday is, you read this, I gave you the information to consume it. Now this is how we're going to go attack your, your client base or your market base with that information that you got on Friday. So I give them the weekend and then Monday we come back with, this is, you know, we've weaponized it and now this is how we're going to go use it. Right. I love, I love that you're already kind of going into a little bit of a tactical route here of like, here are the specifics we do. So let me double click on this. The, uh, once there's a cadence, you're going every Friday, love that. Um, in terms of this call to action, so digest and there'll be a call to action Monday. What, what does that look like? Obviously I don't want you to divulge, uh, information, but like, what would that look like? What's, what's like the level of CTA and what, what's the kind of expectation from Friday to Monday that you're kind of building sort of a, a loop, I guess here. Absolutely. So that Friday is, this is what you got and this is how you can use it. Right. So I tell them, I, I, I give them, um, the study material. And then I assign that to campaigns that we're doing. So right now we're launching a campaign against a specific competitor um, that's been breached many, many times, right? And since security is a big topic of conversation, when I'm launching that campaign to go um, target that specific competitor, um, when they log in a clue on Monday, what they will see in those cards is they will see that call to action from that previous newsletter that went out with the links to the cards that they have that give them things like um, call scripts, um, email templates that can be sent out and these one or two pager slide decks that help them understand and continue that conversation. So now when they're doing the call out or the email campaign, um, that content is now being put in front of them. Now, the second thing that I do with that inside that newsletter is when it's forward things, um, things that, um, may be aggressive tactics where we are starting a campaign against a specific competitor or a call out against a specific mm -hmm. competitor. I take this same content that we've created in our newsletter and those links and the sub the sub content that was created part of it, and I um, put that content into Kaya and outreach, so it becomes an immediate asset for my BDRs and XDRs. Those call scripts and the rundown, you know, the email templates and the call scripts. Monday morning, when the BDRs XDRs walk in, when they're making calls and that competitor's name is mentioned, that fresh content is popped up directly inside of that with a link back to the newsletter. By the so if they need deeper context, um, they can always click on the newsletter to go back and it just creates this circular chain of information. Everything is contained in one and it all got kicked off with the newsletter on Friday. But yeah, you're right. It is very circular. It's very much a process. I'm trying to inform, engage, weaponize, and then monitor um, our progress on what's been weaponized. So I'm also using my reporting tools on who's hitting my newsletter, what section of my newsletters are they hitting, what are they really engaging with, um, and then we'll use that information, you know, look at it over the course of, say, four or five weeks. And then we'll use that to go back and um, if, there are, if there are portions of the newsletter information that they're just not engaging with or it's not making any progress, it can help my salespeople move forward and make better decisions, then we get rid of it. So we're always so new as well. I, I love this. This is such a unique way I've heard the newsletter being used and like really using it to its fullest extent. Uh, I'm curious, where does, so you mentioned there, like we could build a newsletter on, and it's because it's part of a bigger campaign of targeting a specific competitor right now. One that might have some, uh, uh, I think leaky security you mentioned. Yep. Where, where does that strategy come from then? This, what, for, what teams are involved in, okay, if these are, if this is Druva's mission that you mentioned, um, what teams are involved in deciding, okay, if this is our mission and these are our targets, we should 
go after this competitor in a campaign right now? Like, who who are the stakeholders stakeholders involved there? Every every um, every group inside Druva is involved in that. Literally, from from Dill Desk all the way down to um, me and the XDRs and the BDRs. So, um, all of the sales leadership, all the C level executives, everybody's engaged with that when we decide we're going to go run that kind of campaign, right? So, this is the way that I think about it. I I believe I so I'm not going to go with any branding here. I'm just going to go with concept, right? So, you mm-hmm. think about when I think about something like CNN, CNN is on 24 seven. You can go to the CNN channel, you can watch CNN news all day long, right? And if you have a if you are the kind of person that's wired where you want to know what's going on across the world, where well, CNN is your news source for that, right? So, I think about what I'm doing with this newsletter as the newsletter is my CNN component. That is my 24 seven always go back to. So mm-hmm. the way that I look at it is I can't be engaged with all of those teams around the clock. So I'm using my newsletter as that engagement point. I'm using it to get out to the field, what I've heard. And you'll see Adam, if you go look, there are times where I push newsletters manually because some of this stuff just can't wait until Friday. This is stuff they need to know now. So I'm kind of like, um, I'm kind of like the den mother. I'm thinking about all my all my little cubs going out in the world tomorrow and what do they need to know to be successful because I want my cubs to be more successful than anybody else. And I want Druva to be more successful. I want to show progress. I understand all that Druva is and, and I get excited about it the same way I get excited about Clue. But how do I articulate that way to a field, to the field that they can... Um, they can consume this information, weaponize it for themselves, and then use to push forward. How do we go conquer the world? So I'm constantly thinking in this newsletter, the saga, so continue the story. I think about that as identity. Who is Druva? What are we saying to the marketplace? And this information that has come in, how does it impact um, that image that's Druva? How do we differentiate ourselves in a market where most of the players are private companies, um, which you know, 70% of our field are still private companies? So um, there's not an awful lot of real deep scraping that you can do on these private companies. You know, there's not a lot about financials that are released to the outside market. So I need guerrilla warfare and I need my cubs to be that guerrilla warfare. And that's the call to action that we were talking about before. So I think about the image of Druva, this, this messaging, or this intel that's now come in. How do I put that away to continue or bolster or give confidence in that image of Druva to pump them up mm-hmm. so they feel like they can go to market better? Um, and then feel like they have a firm grasp and understanding and context of people, places, product, and processes. I think as well, when you're talking about this, we'll get into some like kind of more hard tactical stuff as well that folks can implement into their own digest uh, soon here. But what I love is one sort of the alignment across the organization as to this is a priority or this is a campaign or this is a thing that all stakeholders understand we are in lockstep in terms of whatever initiative we're going after. And then that means that your digest, your newsletter is related to that. So it's like an AE, an SE, a product manager even, like their headspace is thinking about what the digest is talking about. And then you're adding more information. It's not catching them out of left field about something that's sort of, irrelevant like it might be important but it's not what's important to them today so it's kind of adding in again to like your point of having a clear story clear message and alignment on this is what matters most and so the newsletter is going to just put rocket fuel into that and i'm going to give folks the resources needed to achieve a campaign that leadership sales leadership have deemed incredibly important and again we've talked to so many folks like having that type partnership as a compete function with leadership is what makes you indispensable to the organization. If you're doing stuff off to the side, you're doing stuff that you find interesting, you hope the rest of the team finds interesting, well, you're, you're SOL at that point. You're, you're, you're paddling upstream, add another cliched metaphor. You're, you're, you're not gonna get the results that you need to be successful. And again, this market, there's, there's, there's not as much margin for error. Right, what, what you need doesn't matter. <laughs> You have to always ask yourselves, um, and this is every time I engage with a salesperson or a sales leader, every little simple conversation I have with them, I always ask them, um, is what I'm giving you useful? What would you change about it? You know, what are, if, if you could wipe this away and rebuild it, what are the top five things you would have? 
in mm. every interaction that I have with people across the organization, that's usually the last question that I ask. How would you change what you're getting? Is it consumable? Can you weaponize it? And does it make an impact? You know, are you able to have a conversation? So I know we're moving away from that framework a little bit, but for the last year, my world has been moved on no say show, right? So every, every conversation that I'm having across the organization, I try to frame that inside when they ask questions or they give me Intel, I try to frame that back to them in that no say show. So mm -hmm. if I can take every interaction that I have with a salesperson or with a sales leader, or with finance or the deal desk or whoever it might be, if I can take every interaction and turn it into a no say show, then I think we're making progress. So that means we understand what our objective is. We're starting to understand what we need to collect um, as far as intelligence. You know, that that's probably a big thing too, is what do you collect and what do you pay attention to? And how do you make a decision on, I know that's one of the questions, right? How do you make a decision on what goes out to the field? Um, so that image thing, um, I, I circle it back to that as well. Have conversations constantly. I use the newsletter to have to maintain a connection when I can't be there. So people are busy and they're all over the world and they're flying all over the place. I have a lot of meetings get canceled because people are, you know, right now um, uh, we're kind of reorging how how um, the sales force goes to market. So I can't be with mm -hmm. the sales leaders as often as I want to. So my newsletter is my, con my connection to maintain to make sure that I don't drop that continuity with the sales leaders as well. Yeah, it really is a, it becomes my book for everything. So we've touched on here, I think off the, off the top is sort of how the newsletter fits into your competitive strategy and Druva's kind of broader go to market and competitive strategy. Uh, I want to get into a couple specifics or tactics as well in terms of building the, the digest and newsletter. What are some of the sections that you have to include in your newsletter? What are the ones that you're getting the most clicks on, you're getting the most feedback on? What are those, what are the hits that's always gone into James's newsletter? So we're building a, a compete culture. That's the top of everything, right? So everything is culture, culture, culture. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, always recognize um, those out in the field that are passing intel and communicating with mm -hmm. it. So they're hitting the Slack channel, they're passing us through Salesforce, they're sending it through email. I see things come in from browser extensions. So that's the top thing that I hit is recognizing those people that are doing that and then a call to action to, um, to bring other people into doing that. So I may ask, once I recognize that person this week, I may ask them to write a paragraph for next week about why they do that. You know, why is this important to you? How has it helped you in your business? What has this done for you? Um, so always recognize the people. Um, after the people that I'm going to lay out um, what's happening across my partner community, we should be 100% sales to field. That's really our goal. Um, that's a goal for and a focus for our CRO and for our sales leaders. So I'm calling out our partners that have contributed. Um, we have a very large partner now that has um, access to our Clue environment. We're finding that to be very helpful right now. So we've opened up our Clue access to our selling, to some of our selling partners. So I'm making calls to those selling partners as well on appreciating the efforts they've made, calling out those partners that have contributed, um, and then a call to our partners and alliances group on what Intel is important to them and what they should look for in the newsletter. So they can immediately click on that and go to their partner section. So I'm going to recognize the people that are contributing. I'm going to recognize our partner community. Um, and then I'm going to start, the next section is going to be that story. So I'm going to give them inside that one quick paragraph on what this newsletter is really all about. You know, this is even before the intro. It's kind of a TLDR paragraph on what this is about. I'm going to give them the five bullets on what they're going to get out of it. That way they can click on, they don't have to read the entire newsletter. They can go to their specific section. So I'm going to give them a quick place to drop to so they can get into their intel quickly. Um, and then I'm going to list dates. And those dates are about the campaigns that we're running. Uh, the campaign that I mentioned earlier, that's going to go on for a period of time. So I'm going to give them dates so we can start to track the progress that we're making through that campaign. Um, there are other sections that I use across different newsletters, but for my primary company newsletter, those are the sections that I use every time. I do right now four different newsletters across groups. Um, so those sections can be different depending on the group that's getting the newsletter. Well, let's get into that then. Who are, who are the four different groups you're sending newsletters to and how do they differ? So I have a broad general a company newsletter um, this is everything that you need to know about what's happening in the field i have a newsletter for my products group that is a very product specific product launches people changes inside things like product 
um, um, the, the product organizations inside my competitors, funding, et cetera. So we're talking about things that have been launched in the field, revenues my competitors are generating off of it. And I'm using that to do things like engage that conversation about where we are today with product and where we might um, strategize on roadmap moving forward. So what are we doing today? What do we need to be doing a year from now? And that, use, that newsletter is my communication in that products group. So I spent a portion of my life as a product manager as well. And one thing that I always had to do as a product manager is I had to be the person to go out and find out what was happening in the competitive stack around me, what my, what my uh, competitors were doing and uh, individual things like workloads. Say I want to back up a workload inside a cloud space. To find out what my competitors were doing, I'd have to spend a lot of time as a product manager going to research that. So I've tried to remove that research from my product managers. I'm gonna come back and, and give them some comparison in the newsletter to tell them what the competitors are doing. Um, I'm also gonna give them some anecdotes. I'm gonna, um, I throw these anecdotes for these attempt to trust where I don't have bridges. These product managers may not have a reason to trust me and the information that I'm giving them yet. So I will always throw in these little attempt to trust pieces. And those little attempt to trust pieces are where I'm giving James's anecdotes on what this means and where the, the vision that I see on what this means for the future. So I'm trying, I'm using that to build a trust relationship with those product managers. When I move, uh, so I have a general newsletter, I have the product managers, I have a newsletter for my marketing group um, mm -hmm. where we're talking about what messaging looks like across our competitors and how that aligns to um, our own messaging and the campaigns we're running. And really, um, I use that component to try to maintain linearity and messaging across the organization. I'm mm -hmm. talking to all of the different groups. When I first got here, I noticed there were there were times where we were saying different things or we were in different places inside a campaign. Um, so I'm using the newsletter now also to tie linearity across those campaigns to make sure that everybody has the same messaging at the same time. We're all going to market saying the same. So then I pull it back to my CSMs where renewals are really important for all of us. Right now, we want to reduce churn. We want to increase our renewal rate. So I'm using using the newsletter for what's happening to our competition around us and framing that for when you go back to this is likely what you're going to hear from a customer at renewal time because most of my most of my renewals I've noticed today. Um, you guys may have noticed this as well, but I think five years ago I had the luxury um, of renewals being probably a ninety percent chance, um, ninety percent chance mm -hmm. of renewal rate. Now. Today, those renewals, it's, it seems like we go into renewals and it's like competing for brand new business all over again. All the oh, yeah. there is just like the first time that you went after it. So to reduce that churn, what I realized that I'm having to do is I'm having to take those CSMs and coach them into being an AE and an SE as well. I'm having to expand the conversations that they can have. And the only, only way that I can do that um, is by giving them linearity and messaging. They're, your customer or prospect is hearing one thing from your salespeople and SEs when they're on site or they're making calls. When the CSM calls in, um, and it might be at that point of renewal, they need to be telling the same story with the same messaging. They need to understand when that customer says, oh, well, we're looking at you know two or three other, other competitors. That's the moment of impact where they need to be able to address that. Right? Um, and then I moved to the BDRs. After the CSMs, I moved to my BDR and XDR team. Um, most of those folks tend to be very new um, in the organization, may even be new to this industry. So my focus has to be different for that group. Um, I have to teach them what the identity of Druva is, what the identity of the marketplace is, um, who the competitors are and why they're relevant in context to what we're doing today. And then with the XDRs and BDRs, I'm doing a lot of early career, early technology coaching. You know, this is the history of backup, history of SaaS, why Druva is important. Um, and I use the newsletter um, to do that, to build confidence for those teams. That way, when they get on the phone at the beginning of the day, they feel like they know what story to tell. Um, that's the enablement portion. So not just intelligence, but, you know, it's my competitive enablement newsletter as well. So many folks in compete in product marketing say the lines, know your audience, both internally, your internal audience and your external audience. And I just, for listeners, rewind about a minute and just listen back to what James is saying there because it's such a masterclass in knowing exactly what your audience needs to know. You mentioned about 10 minutes ago as well. It's like compete is not about what matters to me or what I care about. It's about what these teams care about. It's what the business cares about. And those specific, very specific examples of what is relevant to a CSM. 
and how you tailor that information or support them to be more competitive in, in, a, in a situation where renewals are more competitive. BDRs, newer reps, might need more rampant on the industry. Product teams, how do I build trust? Like, There's so many great nuggets you've just shared there and it's all done primarily or one of the big vehicles you're using to do so is this Intel Digest. And for listeners that are kind of going through this series, checking out this resource, again, what you're doing right now, James, I think is proof of the value, the impact, and the strategic asset that a quality Intel Digest that's rooted in a clear strategy has for the organization. And that those specific examples, like, oh my gosh, I got, I'm gonna have to listen to that one back too. Cause that was, that was incredible. Flow. I mean, that's the way I look at the newsletters. How, how does the world know? How will I, how the, beyond the metrics say, thank God we have recording now. Right? So when the other thing that I did when I was interviewing here and I said that I'm going to have clue to build my program was I promised them in the beginning that I would give them a dashboard to know whether or not they needed to fire me. All right. So that's the way I look at the reports and dashboard now is I look at it as, um, it's giving the numbers on whether or not I know what I'm doing and what I'm doing is can I engage the field and make progress so they better, better understand the market they're in, how they're different or how they differentiate inside a very muddy marketplace and how they can create a unique, unique identity for Druva to move that forward. If I can't do those things, it shows up in Clue very easily, right? When, when I go to those reports and start clicking and clicking and looking at what they're consuming, I can see whether or not I understand the strategy of the company. If I understand how to put assets and collateral in front of them that will make an impact and whether or not they're consuming and using it. And now I can start to correlate that directly to dollars. So I, I tell my CEO that that new dashboard that I just sent out to him yesterday, by the way, my first screenshot, this is the dashboard to know whether or not you need to fire me. I know times are hard right now. A lot of things are happening across different organizations, but right, this is going to tell you whether or not you need me. Um, and when you go look at some of those dollar amounts and, and how those work. Can I say something else about the reports real quick and another problem this is helping me solve internally? All right. So absolutely, because I live inside the marketing department, um, I sit back here in our weekly meetings. Um, I sit back and I listen to all these conversations about SQL to MQL and funnel conversion. Right. And they can never, even though I'm having conversations with customers all the time and I'm having conversations with sales teams, they can never quantify or they can never throw me into an MQL or an SQL bucket. And today that's a dangerous place for a CI person to be if they live inside marketing. Because everyone about everyone around you has attribution for what they touch. And for me, I'm the one person that although I feed into all of those, there's no attribution call for me. I don't get MQL, SQL. So what reporting is doing for me is it's helping me to drive that internal attribution conversation at Druva on what my value actually is. All right. Today, candidly, that newsletter is what I used to do that. That's that newsletter is what I use to drive um, my value um, because I do all of these things internally. Um, and I live inside the marketing department. So people see collateral produced, but they don't know how James contributed to that. Right. So now by when I create those assets of uh, collateral for those um, cross distributed across those groups, if you go into my clue instance, you'll notice that out to the far right of all of my boards, I've now created a section over there um, that's the highlights of all of that material that I've created for others. And I created, I, I've created clue cards out of that. And what I've asked the collateral producers to do is if it's electronically produced, create a link to my um, back into my clue cards. So now I'm creating mechanics where I can be tri attributed to that SQL, MQL, because I put that content inside Clue. Now I can track it and I can track its consumption. And because it's a clickable link inside their marketing documentation, they're already tracking it for, right? So now if they get MQL to SQL, I should have a direct drag to that MQL, SQL, right? So that's another way that reporting is helping me in this as well. And because I can't be in front of these people all the time, um, I'm, I'm a pretty passionate person. I can't really separate work from life. It all just kind of blends together for me um, because I like storytelling. Um, and this newsletter is, is me storytelling. It's continue the story. You remember where we were last week? You remember what we told you was going to happen? Let's find out if we were right. And I can open it up for, them, right? We said this was going to happen based on what we heard. So it's kind of... It, 
what I'm trying to do over a period of time and where I hope to get this is people can get, get engaged with this. Like, um, it, it's like the walking dead, man. You can't wait for Wednesday night at seven o'clock to go see, you know, what Megan's going to do this time. Right. I want them that excited about what's happening. And where I really, where I'm trying to take the brain swell on this is I want them excited about Drew. The number one competitive mm -hmm. tool set that I can have is people that are passionate about what they're doing. Right. If I can find passionate people that really love this company, they love what they're going to market with, then I can educate those people, right? We can enable those people. We can give them the tool sets, but my newsletter is how I get them jacked up to go conquer the world on Monday. That's what I'm looking for Monday morning is they read it, they understand it, and it makes the most impact to the people that trade their time for dollars, AEs and SEs, where every minute counts. So I want to re remove the uh, minutia and noise and get them to a place where you know, they're not dodging and ducking in foxholes somewhere. They're in a clear, definitive combat position um, that they understand where their competitors are on the field and what tools they need to use to, um, to go dispel that competitor. So it's telling the story and get them jacked up about they can't wait for the next episode, just like your stuff, Adam, right? We can't wait to see your next episode, what Adam's going to come out with, right? You guys have already seen the swallow mat and how the clue clue community really drags to what you're doing right here. And that's what I'm trying to do with my newsletter. Well, I appreciate that. And James, this is the first, but not the last time that I think you're going to be on the show and a part of some of our clue content. And hopefully the newsletter lasts as many seasons as walking dead. <laughs> it was so awesome to get you on. I got, I already got a bullet list of things we're going to follow up on after this, but for now, Intel digest, <laughs> Folks, I hope you took notes on this one, and we'll catch you all next week. Thanks a lot, Adam.